everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the PT Post Mortem Podcast. I am Swaggy Dr. Kush, and this is your host, Doc. Last <laughs> yeah. week, I, I called you my co-host, so I figured I, I'd give you the credit this week. You know? yeah, I mean, we are the co-hosts. It's both of us running this show, not <laughs> one or the other. So, this is the Primetime Post Mortem. We are back again for episode eight. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm, I'm going to go over eight. I'll be shocked if we're more than that. There's definitely previous pilot versions, so we have definitely made about 10 or 12 of these now, but you've only seen eight, which I don't know is a scary idea or not, but hey. <laughs> one day we'll drop the we'll drop the unseen episodes. What, the on one day. with the really bad graphic behind it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that that had like the funniest scumbucket ever. But who was the scumbucket for that? It was Dave. What dirty Dave? Or AK? <laughs> it was no, it was AK Dave because he fucking he bullied somebody for no reason. <laughs> so. Yeah, that sounds like something Swaggy would do. So, on our agenda today. PT-115 and the insanity that came from that, including the Alley DP-10 fiasco, as well as uh, PT-116 with two title fights on the line. So, Listen, man, where you, should we start? You mentioned it. You mentioned it. I want to dive right into <laughs> yeah. it. I want to dive right into Alley Depot versus, <laughs> versus Caliber. Uh, we had to wait a bit for this one because Alley Depot didn't finish the dishes. And, no, and Alley Depot's... Dishes. Hoovering. With pictures being sent in the fight channel for even comedic effect, it was the strangest excuse I think Wait, I've ever had. What was it? Hoovering. He had to the Hoover. What is that? Vacuuming, whatever the fuck you Americans call it. Vacuum. Oh, vacuuming. Yeah, there you go. We call. It oh, a okay. All right, all right. Well, wow, the Americans learned something today. So, <laughs> so he was vacuuming. Uh, that's fucking stranger than dishes, dude. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't vacuum beforehand. You knew you had a fu- fucking big time fight coming. Like, yeah, this he had was a big time fight with Caliber, fight, then, like... but then suddenly he was stuck doing the bloody uh, Hoover. Uh-huh. It was the strangest thing in the universe. No, listen, that was a very... listen. Caliber won by decision, and I feel like we didn't see the Aladipo we always see because he <laughs> yeah, just he almost there. got grounded. <laughs> he almost got grounded. He escaped. Yeah. Like, like, he got in the zone for this fight. And then his mom, dad, whoever it was, came in and was like, yo, fucking, what you the fuck is this, this mess stuff. on the rug? Avoid fucking it. get out there and fucking <laughs> vacuum. And Well, the fight itself is kind of interesting of how it was originally made. Because if I remember correctly, Caliber's original fight pulled out. Ali D's original fight pulled out. And then you had mix-ups kicking about the place because he's fight pulled out. We had a lot of pullouts this week. It was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was very crazy. strange. So what ended up happening was you had Caliber versus Ali 10, but then that was uh, moved up to light heavyweight, which Ali loved. Because uh, the pride out where he goes, he really wanted to use one of them in the competition. I think he did as you well. You want to use re- over him. Yeah. yeah. And, so then, and, and so then you end up with that match. And then for the co-main event, which was originally meant to be Kemuel versus Swag that we talked about on the previous podcast, uh, he basically went MIA. I think is the easiest way to say it. And so, since Mixup didn't have a fight, he hopped into the co-main spot. Um, I don't want to say he beat the brakes off Kemuel, but it definitely seemed like a reason Mixup's currently the number one contender for a reason. He beat the dog shit out of Kemuel. Um, th- this this was like Kemuel's night to shine against Swag. And uh, so it was going to be a really good fight with Ken Muir and Swag. It, it was, really was going to be a really good fight. I'm really sad we didn't it, get it. It it was really good match, and uh, mix ups came in and kind of ruined it for everybody, and just <laughs> beat the absolute. Do- I don't want to say beat the absolute dog shit out of him, but like he beat the absolute dog shit out of him, and and like mix ups just showed that like he's a different dog. He's yeah. a different dog, and. And he's not necessarily happy with what happened with Fadinator. I haven't talked to either of them about this um, yet. Um, but I, I'm I'm 
he he seemed in the Discord the other day in the general chat. He looked pretty confident, but Fad's also he's fat. He's always fucking confident. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. We'll talk about that a little bit down the road. Yeah, um, no, Mixup's main response when he was offered the title shot was, "It's either this or I'm not competing." And th- th- that we didn't really take into account because he already ha- earned the title shot. But it was, it was very evident talking to him uh, in DMs, trying to get picks and s- stuff sorted, that he really wanted this rematch. So it, I'm very intrigued to see your thoughts on the picks later. Um, that was just the co-main event. I mean, the entire card was pretty good genuinely pretty solid uh yeah before we jump too far i do want to talk about a couple fights that i thought were just like phenomenal on certain parts uh one is ripe versus proxer mm-hmm. uh ripe was controlling the pace the entire fight beautifully and he ends up winning by my uh ko um i can't remember their picks i didn't write them down but ripe is one of my ripe's one of my favorites right right ripe is a fucking ripe is a fucking sleeper in every fight because what because nobody like if you like if you know who Ripe is, you know how just how good he is. He's a really solid competitor. That is yeah, of... nah, he is. If you... you know who Ripe is, hmm. like like the comms booth always gives him his respect and everything. I'm not. I'm talking about like from the inside, from the outside looking in. You yeah. might not know who Ripe is, and he usually falls into the dark side of the ranking sometimes, where where he's not looked at as one of the elite because he's losing to the elite but ripe's always fighting the best he's, fucking guys I was gonna right? say, ripe's really good if you want to figure out if someone's going to be able to get into the title picture if if they can have a fight of the night with ripe then they're that they're gonna cause some havoc for the ps division that's just fact right you just you really you just good. called ripe a gatekeeper you just called Ripe a gatekeeper. Has he Say it with your full a... chest next time. I God. mean, has he fought for a title in that case? No, he was very close. <laughs> he was very close. I think the the close. I believe the closest he's been was PT one hundred. He thing, had I, a contender fight. I, I was going to say Buck I think I fought him, but you know what? I think I fought Reepsy, who is someone completely different. Yeah, fucking fried. Um, right. <laughs> Ripe is fucking good though, and I see Ripe making another shot at the title this season. I, I do. want to see him in a title picture. The way he's been fighting is fucking the title gorgeous. Is I mean, bloody wacky as all hell. Yeah, it is. The PS title division is fucking crazy. We'll we'll get down there. There's absolute animals. But before we get down there, I want to talk about K got bills. Okay. K got bills was Carlos Condit and Karrion was Connor, and now Karen. in this situation. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Karen? <laughs> Kieran. Kieran? Yes, that's how like, you pronounce Ka- Kieran Crow like, and K got bills. Like Karen with an I? How the hell are you getting Karen from it? Karen has Ke- an A Ke- in it. Kieran? Yes. W- is Karen, but with an I instead of the A. Karen doesn't have an E in it. Yes, it does. K A R E N. Say that again from my brain. K A R E N. <laughs> you learned how to spell today. Congratulations. K A R E N. Okay. Uh, while you figure this out, I'm going to talk about K Got Bills because K Got Bills impressed me. I mean, K-Got, yes, K-Got but Bills... that's with the E. Uh, shut up. But it's still Kieran. It's not fucking whatever the fuck. Car- Kieran right, or whatever it, the fuck. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. He got submitted. He got submitted. <laughs> K- fucking K got bills. Left him out there lifeless. K got bills. Took took bones out of his body with Carlos Conde. It was beautiful. It was beautiful groundwork from uh, K got bills. And I was very impressed with K got bills groundwork. Um, I, I didn't really... I wasn't too familiar with K got bills. But I'm very familiar now. And I... I mean, this division's a tough division, but I think K-Got Bills it will, will rise up and we'll see him fight top contenders real soon. Uh, another fight I want to talk about mm-hmm. real quick. Actually, two more fights I want to talk about real okay. quick. From the see. One's, one's Art of War versus Dave. Because the return of Art of War was kind of crazy. <laughs> I love Art of War. 
Um, everybody loves Art of War, and the Return of Pigeon Art of War doesn't. was wild. It was very wacky. Yeah, but yeah, but where where is Pigeon? Who is Pigeon? Where uh, like like what is Pigeon know. doing right now? Probably being a pigeon. He's probably set up a nest somewhere. Like like P Pigeon. <laughs> Since the PT press conference has <laughs> been MIA. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, Art of War versus Dave was a close fight until Art of War made the fucking adjustments and starched them, ran mm -hmm. the room, finished them in the second round, made yep. beautiful adjustments. And I was also impressed by Art of War because it was a, it was a return. It was a return of Art of War versus a Dave that I feel like is really he's he's lost that fire he's lost that fire and will to win and and Dave needs to needs to dig deep well, and, and come is, back and find that fire well Dave is I would argue doing Tony Ferguson's win and loss streak of he wins five, he loses five, he wins five, he loses five. That's just Dave. Yeah. Like he like when when he first got into this uh league and when when he first started competing, he went five and oh, fought for the title, lost, and then oh, proceeded to lose four more times afterwards and then finally got a win again. Like that's just Dave, I feel like. It's he's very much He's not inconsistent. He's consistent at either winning or at losing. And it yeah, makes for an that. interesting watch, I've got to say. He got dog walked by Goat, which is crazy <laughs> because, as Jay Dime always reminds us, Goat got no striking. Um, <laughs> uh, so mo moving on, uh, JJ versus MG, which, which I enjoy this fight because both fighters only have two letters in their name. So it's very easy to remember. JJ versus MG. Uh, JJ was Song, which I love that pick. But MG was O'Malley, which is... We gotta do something. You got Y'all gotta start banning four-star O'Malley in these fucking prelim fights and shit. Because cause you're gonna get starched. And that's exactly what happened. JJ got starched. Poor JJ. I feel like... JJ JJ fights hot in the unaired and he makes his way to the main card and then he gets starched and he's just gotta start all over again. Um man, shout I out mean, to JJ. I just now. I wanna see you win one. I wanna see you win one this season. Kid. That means I, MG I just... is four and two on a plus three. That that be yeah, MG MG's been doing that is things. a wild win streak. Plus three and four and two, that's really solid. MG's been doing wild things. We'll see mm -hmm. MG in the in the picture later later on, I'm sure. Uh, moving on, I do want to talk about Blackout. Okay. Blackout. We saw Blackout with Prime Nick Diaz. <laughs> At lightweight. Completely unintentional because it got Did released. you watch that entire fight? Uh maybe. I think it only went I think it only went one round. I'm um, I'm not shocked. It's blackout. The man comes forward, he bullies you, and 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 if you don't get bullied and you're out cold by the end of it, um, then yeah, I've got an interesting fact was, later on. I'll tell you that in a second. It was so much beauty in in this fight from blackout, and like Luke Sav was Islam, and he wasn't really trying to. I, I don't know what was going on, but blackout got it done. Blackout's the man. And I'm just happy Blackout's got <laughs> Prime, Prime Nick, Nick Diaz. Yeah. Now. Yeah. No, oh, I, yeah. I I have fought Blackout a few times with Prime Nick Diaz, and it's kind of scary to be honest. I don't know what the fuck I'm fighting there. It's very much a scary old time. Then I suppose we should talk about the last one on the main card, which was Elite King versus Josh. This was. Basically a number one contender, kind of, ish. Elite King's been out of the game for a while. He competed all the way back in the GP, then went on minus one. Uh, he lost to Rolling Thunder. It's a name I actually haven't seen for a while. Thinking about it, hmm, wonder where he is. Um, I think Thun I think Thunder's taking a little break. Oh yeah, he's he's mentioned that, didn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I I think he's he's going back to the drawing board, and next year he's going to come back. He's for unlearning title. the swaggy style and coming back with the rolling thunder style. Yeah. Uh, nah, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 
Well, so Elite King minus one from the GP way back when. He's been out of the picture for a bit. Came back this week. Lost to Josh. It was several as well, so that's going to be that's always a bomb burner. I want to talk about that fight. Okay. Jo Josh was vault, and I can't read my handwriting. That's incredible. so I don't know who Ek was. Um, EK. but yeah, I He's have Elite no King. fucking. Yeah, Elite King. I Why have no he idea. I. He's named. He's he's got the same name as an Xbox camp, which is also on yeah. PS because of ATB got picked up by Ek. Good for him. Hmm. What a weird pickup, but fair enough. The ATB be getting picked up by EK. I, I've been seeing a lot of weird pickups, like like yeah. people that have starched back, at, like I've starched back in the day, getting picked up by like these crazy camps, and I'm like, good for them. Good for them. I'm yeah. happy. You... Yeah, it is very very weird seeing some of the camp pickups, but I mean, it's complete respect. It's, it's it makes it even more interesting to see where they're going to go from it. To be honest. Yeah. I'm excited to see some fucking mm -hmm. some absolute dogs get made out of these these these. It's always bumps. dogs. Um, no, it's never so, cats, is it? It's always dogs. They can't be cats, can they? Maybe a cat. Maybe a cat. We'll find out. Um. Yeah. No. Nah, it's 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 usually always a dog. Um. Moving on. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nah, um. Elite King versus Josh was an absolute fucking war. Um, and then Josh ends up winning by a submission. Which I thought was impressive, and it earned triangle him a title track. shot. Yeah. Triangle track, I think. Yes. And um, and speaking of title shot, Smudger was absolutely getting dogged by Vanyo. Do you know something really interesting that I've just found out? Like, I found out I whilst matchmaking for this next card. Vanio is B3. Okay. Every person who has beaten Smudger outside of STK Storm when allegedly Smudger's controller three. died and then Smudger went back and beat the bleeding brakes off Storm um, has been B3. Everybody who has beaten or nearly beaten Smudger has all been B3. That is Smudger's weakness. It is so weird, it's funny. It's Smudger at one point guys. Smudger at one point was fighting for his life. Like like if he <laughs> took too many more shots, it was statement. done. It was the, like he was statement of the year there. He was fighting for his life, and then, and then he just he just goes out and finishes the fight. Smudger pound for pound goat. I I actually had the honor of speaking to Smudger. Um, mm -hmm. What did he everyone say? else this week ducked my interview? <laughs> uh, Smudger, however, despite being sick, uh, answered, and this is all CV's fault. Because CV ignored me once, and now everybody thinks they're CV's level and can ignore me. You you can't ignore me unless you beat the dog shit out of CV for me. Uh, however, <clears throat> I mean, Smudger said, you know, I him up. I said, good win, champ. Uh, and he said something in the chat about being ill, so I asked him how he was feeling. And he said uh, he's been ill for the past two days, but he wasn't going to pull out because he didn't want to ruin the card. Um, and he I'm said that's what goats shit. do. Goats don't want to ruin the card, and he wants to be looked at as one of the greatest here. And I do believe he—he's he—he's up there. It's like him and Fatidator, like up at the very top of the pedestal, mm -hmm. like in both of their rightful divisions. And I don't know, Smudger. Smudger looks very unbeatable this year because this season, because even Vanio was so close. Well, and Smudger if we break made it down this fight. So, from what I remember, which I think is honestly the first round and the last round, because the in between rounds were kind of the same thing by Vanio. But mainly, so the first round you saw a lot of calf kicks, a lot of calf kicks by Vanio, and he timed them really well. 
they were really really sneaky smudger just couldn't really get a read on it so by the time smudger did get a read on it one leg was already dead and he already had lackluster power with izzy when you're fighting potan Pereira, which is just a nightmare for the power wise so that was kind of the story of the game it was the case of smudger can't trade without getting clipped and being stunned in some capacity but smudge is also working the stam really well like for a lot of it the stam was working really well i think i think if the game had a couple of patches with the stam that fight may be completely different just because the way smudge is working the stamina on the body so that was kind of the story it was smudge trying to find a sneaky shot vanio just landing with power each time and causing some havoc that all changes about in the fourth where you see smudge is slowly starting to get a bit more to grip slowly starting to have a better idea he's spent three rounds dealing with the utter insanity of Pereira and then really just having to dig deep and so then when he comes out in the uh, fifth round it is literally onto the ground in what a minute maybe two and next thing you know he's got back flat he's posturing up twice and it's it like this man spent four rounds on the feet getting beaten arguably and then coming in coming into the fifth smudger just shows that those for previous four rounds don't matter like smudger needed a finish and he got the finish and that's kind of what's really impeccable about smudger so far is even when even if he wants to be a striker he knows when to grapple and that's i think one of the biggest takeaways you can see as smudger being a champ right now is that he's not afraid to grapple he's not afraid to engage in that aspect even as a striker that was a beautiful breakdown um but yeah smudges to go (laughs) <laughs> That's all I can say from that. Like, so, like you, you just explained to us, Smudger was getting his ass beat until he round was. four. That's just right. I mean, and then in the that championship is... rounds, he woke up and said, "These are my rounds. I'm the champion." Mm-hmm. That dog came out, and Smudger got it done. Yeah, no, pound that's for pound really it. But that's nothing to take away from Vanio. Vanio looked the best I've ever seen, and the best challenger I've seen against. <laughs> smudger i mean even the other b3 boys they've that they've got finishes against smudger but i don't think any of them had 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 it as in dominating fashion as vanio did for those three and a half rounds like seriously i would love to see a rematch only for the fact of maybe we get something that isn't middleweight <laughs> only it isn't smudger picking izzy to have that fight to then have to resort to doing other stuff and maybe you see a bit more of a te- technique fight of some talking to just pure brute force versus slow methodical practice because that's kind of what it was and, and that's kind of what i mean uh Pereira allows is it really does allow a brute force approach is even if you know you're not as technically good you can get away with a lot more stuff because of that power I was going to say something like I wanted to see uh, Vanio face maybe a, a top contender, and he's actually fighting Blackout this Yeah, time. I was going to say, he's fighting Blackout. Uh, that's a top so team. I'm actually, that's a fight I'm actually excited for. Uh-huh. Um, that's, the the card this week's looking fucking stacked the shit up. It's, I mean, should we move over to it? So we've talked about every uh, fight from 15, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. so this week's card is literally if it could be any more stacked it would be arguably from the guys hanging around from 15 to rank 20 i would say but basically right now the matchups are the main card is from one to about lowest rank is 13 and then prelims are from 10 till rank 29 <laughs> looking at this no nah, look Loki, though, let's look at the prelims first because the prelims got some absolute fucking bangers. Well, you get to the debut, uh, the live card debut of EKATB. 
I mean, yeah, we've seen I'm, him on UFC four before. This like, is his UFC five debut. I'm really interested and, in his opponent though. Like, I'm um, genuinely like he seems to be there. Like I've seen him about, not necessarily in terms of fights, but I've seen him talk and uh sign up and do his on air fight and he seems like he's gonna be a really interesting character so i'm really intrigued to see where this goes this might come out so disrespectful but okay. i was 99 percent sure that he was svg like two days ago however aka is a good camp um <laughs> and and we did have an it, svg uh, guy uh sign up on an, on uh on ed it's interesting to see the svg guys can be yeah, it always is. I uh, I was former SVG. However, um, wow. AT You're dog shit. <laughs> My spinning elbow spam. I would uh, fit right yeah. in. Yeah, no, um, uh, ATB is an absolute dog. Uh, former TST for like two weeks. Uh, so I know he a dog. Um, that he... a heavyweight. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't even see the fuck. Oh, I, I, I just looked over and it's a heavyweight. That's. I don't even want. I don't even want to talk about this fight anymore. I just <laughs> we'll, we'll move on. At least, at least we have a heavyweight banger to start the card off. Anybody could win. It's Someone's going to be unconscious within the first yes. round. You're dope. Somebody's winning. Um, I mean, the second and fight above got... that is Scarface. Who's JB? I haven't got a bloody clue to be honest. He's won one fight on there, signed up, and he's now here. So, yeah, I don't actually know. I'm intrigued. I'll say that much. I'm really intrigued. That's going to be four-star bantamweights. I'm excited to find out who Jamie is. Uh, yeah. And then we I got... mean, Scarface is really well-rounded talent as well. <laughs> so that's going to be, like, pretty good. <laughs> You're laughing at the Pug versus... Uh, yeah, we got Miss. Pug versus Mystics. Mystics. Um... This is bound to be a good fight. Uh, Pug was calling me out in PT general chat. Like, why? What did you do? To go. Um, I don't know. Uh, however, however, I've been beating that ass on the unaid, so I'll see you motherfuckers on the main card soon. However, no, you won't. Pug versus Mystics is <laughs> bound to be a wrestle fest, bro. It's bound to be a grapple fest. Um, um, I don't. I'm not too familiar I think with Mystics. I've talked about Pug before. Pug goes for two approaches. It, he either is jab strike, arguable lean on spam, uh, depending on how you want to take it. And then you have Mystic, who is uh no, oh or or huh? words brain, or Pug goes for the grappling approach where he just shoots non-stop double leg takedowns and you end up on the mat and you end up having to fight that fight. It's one or the other. And I feel like Mesex is more typically a striker, so I feel like we're going to get um, a grapple-heavy match. It's going to be the stereotypical striker versus grappler here. You would assume that, but I do see... I feel like it's going to be wrestle-heavy on Pug's part. Um, moving on, we do have Frosty versus uh, Goals99. Now, I'm a fan of Frosty. I'm a Frosty fan. Frosty is ice fucking cold. Um, and I'm familiar with Goals99 now. I believe he fought last week or maybe the week before. Uh, and I, I do see... I see this fight being a, a barn burner in certain situations, depending on the picks here. Uh, I kind of, Let's just blow through the prelims. Moving forward, we got Aladipo versus Fluid Bren. Uh, is Fluid a camp? Yeah. The mad people got yeah, Fluid in there. Man. Fluid is a bunch of people. Uh, there's Bren, <laughs> Morbius, Frosty, I think, or Frost. Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair... Um, goals in the previous fight was very confused when he first saw his matchup because he m mistook KM Fonty for KM Frosty because he fought Fonty last week and now he's fighting Frosty. So that was a weird five minutes going, No, you haven't fought Frosty, but you have fought Fonty. So there's that. Um, yeah, uh, I feel like it's a stereotypical. I, I'm, I was gonna say striker versus striker, but Ali's in recent times has turned more and more into grappler. 
Ali's really much an MMA person. He will just take it wherever the fuck he feels like it. He doesn't care. Listen, I want to point something out with Ali. Mm-hmm. Ali Depot is four and four. He's consistent. He is. He's now I feel bad <laughs> because I feel like Ali Depot is way better than his record says he is. Yes. But one thing we have to remember. Last week's loss was a fluke because he had to vacuum a rug. And <laughs> I a, another loss was to Fadinator. Um another loss was to Keza. Yep. Bye. And another loss was to I don't know, but he was definitely a dog. So Ali Debo's only yeah. lost to dogs and, and yeah, vacuuming a basically, rug. Basically Ali's like is bidding that top ten consistently, so he's full every fucker possible. That's we're in that top ten. Who's gonna kill anybody? So I, yeah, I do see Aladipo now as ranked twenty, just kind of breezing through the bottom half of the rankings and getting back up into the top sixty. Yeah, literally. Maybe a week or I two. think yeah, no, it definitely feels like he's probably he may win this fight, go back up into that top sixteen place, win one um, or two more fights, and come back down, lose, and hang around general vicinity. Maybe I mean I. I yeah, mean, he's already had. He hasn't had a title shot, but he has fought. Well, oh. he has kind of, if you want to count it in the Xbox GP. Hang on. I don't think it no, was. A that, no, that was three rounds. But yeah, but he has fought the current champ. Yeah, he has fought Fad. Yeah. Um, and he had a really good fight against Fad. Mm-hmm. Uh, now moving forward, we got Uhu versus Eagle. MMA? Eagle MMA. I'm not, yeah, who the fuck is reverse that? I'm not. Spex, Spanx, Reverse, whatever the fuck. Reverse S-P-E-X is his PSM. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Fair I enough. have no idea. Um, well, however, I, I, I feel like I say this every card. WR is a very good camp that has very good Well, corner, the weirdest part is there's so game many game of them. I feel like there are a lot of them now, and what? I have been seeing that this is no disrespect. I have been seeing more of them lose in the past couple of weeks, and I want to know, I'm just curious if that's because they're starting to grow more and the game planning starting to kind of get more stretched out. Mm, maybe. I mean, I, I got sent a list over by Hoo of all the AK members, and it's like, it was really quite small. The same what Yeah. I- it's a really and small, tight knit camp. AKA was one of those camps when it first started that it was every single person in their mother. But they've since like <laughs> yes, know, they've mate. since like um, they've since like narrowed down. Yeah, no, they have. Um, I've only got five or six members. It's really intriguing. Yeah, but that's that. Those are the best camps that succeed. Yeah, now no. moving forward, we got Wright versus Dino, which I'm very interested in. It's a bantamweight <laughs> fight. That. Di- Dino is Dino is a f- Dino's a freak. <laughs> Dino's a freak, bro. Dino Dino's just Dino a freak. Leave Dino Why? alone. Why? <laughs> Dino's a freak. Di- Dino Why? Well, I compare decision every time. I'd compare Dino to Webbo. <laughs> but but like, like instead no, of sitting in side control, all to fight, Webbo. Genuinely, he just can't. he just sits on the ground and just like waits for a decision to come. Like the judges are his best friend, and <laughs> one day it's gonna bite him in the ass. Now, don't put but, Dino versus Reaper because Reaper just plays off the judges. We have ripe. Yeah, we have ripe. And Ripe is a dog. I don't think uh, Ripe's going to settle for that. Ripe doesn't like boring fights. Ripe likes to put on a show. Yeah. Ripe, Ripe is a dog. And I yeah. do think Ripe is going to show that there's levels to this. And Dino's going to get dog walked. And that's just that's just what I think. But Dino could very well ride him out to a decision. And, and, and pause. And... and Win this. I mean, I mean, with how much shit talk you're saying, it definitely feels like Dino's just going to shoot non-stop takedowns and hold him down now, just to spite you. <laughs> That's how I feel. Mm. That's how I feel. Very, now, very now, possible. Now let's get to the main, main card. This card. first fight's so crazy. Listen. The fight of the night. 
This is going to be fight of the night. What do you think? Kenmuir versus Art of War, fight of the night. But listen, I feel so bad for Kenmuir. <laughs> Why? Because he's gone from mix-ups up to Art of War. He got fucked last week. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you're not wrong. But also, at the same time, that. that's just the way the competing goes sometimes. They, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I it know, really is I the know. way the cookie crumbles. I mean, yeah, okay, and now, got fucked, but also at the same time. <laughs> eh. Now he has to fight a very impressive and almost seems pissed off Art of War. I mean, and and Art post, of War wants... So the card got posted, and I think Art of War was so happy for this fight. I, I, so I think he's genuinely looking forward to this. Because this immediately kind of jumps him up in the rankings. Yeah, if he can very beat Ken. Mm-hmm. It kind of jumps him up. And it's a really good fight for Art of War because, he I mean... Plays I, into his style. Yeah, and Art of War makes very good adjustments. But the same time, he plays week. into Kemuel's style because Kemuel can't stand takedowns. And Art of War is not going to shoot a takedown. Uh, yeah, it is definitely going to be a striking fest. Um, it's going to be fight of the night. Luke Sav, Sav versus MG. Versus MG? Yep. Luke Sav is 3-0? and oh? Yep. Did he not fight Blackout last week? I'm now double-checking. What? Um... Yeah. He lost the blackout last week, right? Yes. So is he three and one? He should be two and one. <laughs> Luke Sav got handed a dub. Uh quickly loading up the ranking sheet. Uh just double checking. Uh We're 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 gonna leave this in. Fuck it, we'll leave this in. Uh Ah. Oh, okay. Well, uh... <laughs> so, uh, this is kind of an issue when you have so many... Bloody hell, that's a big drop. Um, that's kind of the issue when you have so many fights. So, basically, both of them were given a win by mistake. Uh, yeah. Both of them were given a win by mistake. There's nothing more to say about it. Normally, that gets corrected before Thursday, but apparently, all of us have been really busy. Nobody's double, uh, and we forgot to fully double check. So, yeah, uh, that fight may or may not be corrected, given the fact of what happened. I personally feel like it's fair game still. Now I was gonna I was gonna point out that this is I believe they're from the same camp. They were both in former camps together. So I think this is gonna be a good matchup for the both of them. Yeah. Uh I don't think it should get switched. That's a uh Well that's a weird I issue mean, to have run into randomly on post mortem. Uh yeah. yeah. No, it's, we will it, look it into happens. it. We'll discuss it as a, as a team. As I'm a sure we'll see his ranking change before Saturday, but the fight should stay the same. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, of course. We'll work something out. No, um, hmm. I'm moving on to the man that moving beat him on. last week. <laughs> Blackout versus Vanio, which I'm fucking jazzed up for this I'm fight because listen to me. Listen to me. Bla- Blackout is that guy that, like, he, there's no in between on this. He got dog walked by Smudger and. This is kind of his, like, he, this is kind of his revenge tour. And he's got his Nick Diaz. Tour. And this this fight is at lightweight. And this is his second fight in a row at lightweight since Nick Diaz Pride has been released. And mm-hmm. I just know he's going to pick Nick Diaz if it's not banned. And he's the higher rated, so it's not going to get banned. He's going to yeah, absolutely Vanio dog walk. Then, he, then Blackout's going to embarrass him. <laughs> Nobody uses Fair Nick Diaz as good as Blackout. No. Um, and now I'm not. I'm I mean, not taking away. You know how I because... said like Kemi versus that was gonna be fight of the night. Yeah, we may end up with two fight of the nights at this point. Blackout Vanio and Kemi or at war. That's gonna be a very 
Yeah, tough. because Vanyo's Vanyo's not going to give up here and they're from the same yeah. camp. I do think this will be a war. Moving forward to another war is going to be Keza versus K God Bills. The return of um, Keza. Yeah, Ke Keza's out here. He wants a title shot. Mm -hmm. This is like. I don't think he could earn one here, but he could definitely make a big statement. Uh, especially with K-Got Bills being on a plus two. K-Got Bills is looking fucking three good Three right fights on, on this main card are all possible title shots, I would say. Depending yeah, we got Playboy Drew versus Caliber, uh, Caliber as well. And they're both 3-0. Oh. Yeah, they're both 3-0, and that, and so they're like that one could, win away. That would be a good one. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be have... a good fight. Nas, Nas versus, versus Buck. Buck. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of everybody's, like, neither of them have faced Smudger yet. Whoever wins is going to give Smudger a run for their money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's given Smudger keeps his belt. Uh, he will. Um, he's fighting Josh. Uh, however, Nas versus Buck is probably going to be the third fight of the day. Um, I do see that being a war because even if Buck tries to wrestle fuck Nas, Naz very good on the ground. Naz is gonna do his thing. Naz is gonna work hard down there. Naz Naz could possibly get it done. Um, moving up to the co-main, we have Smudger versus Josh mm -hmm. for the PS title. Um, this is crazy because I didn't even know Josh was up for a title, but he's on a plus four. So it makes a lot of sense that he's up for a title. He's won four in a row. He's beaten very, very good fighters. He's beaten EK. He's beaten other dogs. And Smudger versus Josh should be a good one. Josh might give Smudger a run for his money the first couple of rounds. Um, I know Smudger is feeling well-rested probably and, and not sick like last week. And he's moving into this with a clear head. And uh, you want another I'm sure... I'm sure we'll see. Yeah, let me see the picks. It's middle. So, so. we have finally Mudger picking Alex Pereira. Thank fuck for that. And then we have Josh, who's gone Anderson Silva. I don't, quite, be a really good I don't quite understand the Anderson Silva pick. But... The Anderson Silva picks the smartest pick against Alex because you can kind of defend way better than picking Izzy uh, with Anderson. I don't know. It's just better defense with Anderson, I feel. Um, okay. However, I think Smudger wins that one either way. Yep. Uh, I, I, I don't... I, I Nothing against Josh. I just don't see Josh as a title holder in this... In this current wow, the disrespect. in this current <laughs> in this current ecom ecosystem of the PS division, I don't see Josh as championship the material yet. Disrespect by and I just no 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 and and it's not even because it's not even because Josh was out here last night sending that banana picture in the fucking Discord either. That's not why I'm talking the shit. However, all I'm saying is. Josh, ha like, like, who besides Elite Cake has Josh beaten? Like, let me go back into my notes. Like, Josh hasn't had a win that's like, oh, fuck. Josh just showed that he's here. Josh beat CX. Uh, congrats. Josh beat, Josh beat, who else did Josh beat? Like, like, that's his last two wins. CX and fucking uh, EK. Uh, that's King. all I can find. Solid. Are you dissing Elite King? No, I'm not this an elite king. I'm not this anybody. I'm just it saying seems like you're that he has Josh right I'm now. just saying. I'm just saying what, that he can? hasn't. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying that Josh. This is Josh's chance to prove himself. If Josh does win this fight, I have a di complete different energy next week. <laughs> completely different energy next week. But all I'm saying is. He's not on Smudger's level. He's better he hasn't now due to the disrespect you're throwing at him. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, we definitely know the better favorite in that fight for Swaggy. <laughs> yeah, man. Josh like a plus 2,000. Like, yeah, I'm so, so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. So, we go from PS title <laughs> fight in which Swaggy just wants to disrespect the contender completely. Nah, bro. Nobody's to... disrespected. No. <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> 
to I'm Fad record. versus Mix-Ups at Lightweight. All right. All right. Now, this one's completely different from the COVID. Now, now Mix-Ups has proven that he belongs here. Uh, now... <laughs> I hold this in a very different regard than I do the previous matchup <laughs> they've had, only due to the picks. Do Can I hear the picks? Yep. Fan Nater, Dustin Poirier, Mix Ups, Charlie Oliveira. So here's how I feel about this. Listen. We saw we saw the last time they fought. It was Alex Pereira versus Izzy, and that's a way different mismatch. Yeah, there. I don't. I don't generally believe there's a mismatch here with Dustin versus Charles. I don't think anybody has a mismatch because Fad has the advantage on the feet, and um, what's his face has mixups has the advantage on the ground. And I do generally believe that like both of them are good enough to to use their advantages when they. I have agree, to. but I feel like the po I feel like the Pereira pick at middleweight with that power gives a bigger advantage than anything else. So unless mixups can play in a hectic style in which. You just don't know what he wants. You don't know what the fuck he's going to be doing. Because as soon as I get comfortable striking, he's shooting. And then as soon as he starts having any success on the ground, he gets up and starts striking again. Unless Mixups plays that to a T, I feel like Fad's going to walk him down like Edwards did to Kobe. And just like... Shout out, Reaper. Uh, when... Yeah, fuck you, Reaper. When... <laughs> When I now I like Charles Oliveira because when I pick Charles Oliveira, Charles Oliveira has very strong ground game. He has every single submission in the He's game, long. and his his striking is very underrated. I feel. Oh no! Some people hold, some people hold it to a really high standard because of his length. I hold it to a very high standard because he has all of the spins. He he has a flying knee. He has all of that that shit yeah. that we've seen that we've seen Rolling Thunder succeed with. And we've seen myself succeed yeah, within the past. Would you and... say the Rolling Thunder would succeed playing that style against someone like Fabinator? I'm saying that Mixups is Mixups is nowhere close to me and Rolling Thunder. Mixups, mix-ups mix will not up. use that style, but Mixups can mix it up and pull a flying knee out of his ass when you least expect it. Yeah, okay. Pull a fucking spinning elbow out of his ass when you least expect it. Yeah. Pull a cartwheel kick yeah. out of his ass when you least expect it. All of those are knockout dead shots if landed properly when least expected. Yeah, okay. I can get behind that. And he has all of them in the bag with Charles. Dustin, Dustin's a pressure fighter. Dustin's going to be right in your face, especially with Fad. He's going to be breaking the block. Yep. Which leaves him which leaves him vulnerable to the spinning elbow. It leaves him vulnerable to the flying knee. Now, I'm not giving away a game plan here because Mixups doesn't do any of those things. Mixups doesn't do any of those things. But I'm saying that he has him in the bag Thumbs for this game. He move. can catch Fad off guard. However, <clears throat> I like this pick for Fad because the Dustin pick for Fad, a lot of people forget that Dustin's also a jiu-jitsu black belt, and Dustin does have high ground game. He has a rubber guard. Dustin does have good ground stats. He does have rubber guard. And... If he gets taken to the ground, Fadinator is, of course, Fadinator, and Fad's going to work on the ground to not get submitted. Fad knows what he's doing down there. Now, I like it in the regards of striking because it really, Dustin really fits Fad's style really well, I feel. But I also like this pick because it's lightweight, and sometimes Fad likes, Fad likes to just try to drop his balls on the table and go with four star Connor. And I really like that he didn't because this shows that mix-ups was a was close last time. And Fad said, I don't want to give you any advantages this time. He made the Izzy pick last time. I don't want to give you any advantages this time. It shows that Fad's more focused this fight. Fad's Fad knows all about mix-ups now. Fad's very well aware what mix-ups brings to the table and I'm not saying he's scared, but making the Dustin pick definitely shows that he's more he's more focused on winning this fight. 
yeah. than he has been in the past with other fights. Yeah, no, I can definitely get behind that either. I think we might see a very impressive Fadinator performance because of how close the last fight was. Obviously, Fad wants to come here and end it in the first three rounds. Fad wants to come out here and end it, so we have no question who yeah. the best fighter right now in the Xbox division is. But Mixups has been working hard to get this fight back. No, definitely. The, the number one contender fight fell into his lap last week. He <laughs> took it on last short notice. He jumped in. He ruined the dreams of Ken Mir. And now he's fighting Fad for the belt. You're not about to give him the scumbag. Before we move on. Okay. Before we move on. Congratulations, Mix Ups, (laughs) because you are this week's scumbucket of the week. I can't believe you've done this. You you absolutely got the scumbucket. You you absolutely did nothing scummy in the fight, but you came And you stole man's number one. Absolutely. robbed this title shot you robbed it you did not you didn't belong here yet (laughs) you have a couple more fights get back up here you fucking stole it congratulations jesus come bucket of the week congrats congrats (laughs) you can if you win the belt you can put the belt in the bucket um and while we're here i just want to talk about my swag bag real quick let's hear it congratulations to ripe uh, Ripe's the dog. And, uh, uh, another close, very close pick was Art of War. Uh, however, I am going to give it to Ripe this week. Jeez. Just, I like the, I like the way Ripe's been fighting, mm-hmm. man. Against very top contenders, Ripe's fighting very well. And, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to next week. Everybody's got good fights next week. It's going to be a really good no. card. This Saturday? Yeah, no. This Saturday, 23rd of December, Christmas Eve, Eve. Uh, 8.30 GMT, 3.30 Eastern. It's going to be ahead of a card. Genuinely, it's going to be looking good. As you mentioned, as you've heard, it's stacked top to bottom. The previous card was utterly mental in of itself. Now we move into this one. That's going to be more fun and interesting to see. So I think, with all that being said, we have talked a lot. We have discussed a lot of fights. We have been going for 52 minutes, nearly 53 now. Um, Yeah, I think it's time to end PT Postmortem Episode 8. If you like the content you've seen here, catch, uh, go watch the other content on our YouTube. A bunch of Fight the Nights from previous cards have been posted already. Um, Swaggy is live at Swaggy Dr. Kush on Twitch. On YouTube now. Uh, on I've, YouTube I've as well. Switched over, I've switched over to platforms for now. No more Twitch, just YouTube at the moment. Um, uh-huh. It's just... it's. It's like easier over there. I enjoy Link the platform. Will be much in the description, I think, I'll imagine. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, I think with that being said, uh yeah. Have a good night, good morning, or good evening, depending on whatever time. A Merry Christmas. And have a Merry Christmas. We'll be back about the same time next week, Wednesday or Thursday, depending on our time schedules. After the Christmas, um, after Christmas has happened, just before the new year, to swing into prime time. So, with all that being said, have a good night. Adios.